It's that time again. The time when we open your leathers. The time when we open all of the leathers that you sent in the month of January 2016. It's mail. Doesn't that only happen once, though? That time again? Technically, yes. This will be the only time we ever open leathers that were sent to us in January 2016. That's what I thought. So this is like a one-time special event. If we're if we're realistic, um, so we don't have a whole lot of stuff to open uh, in January. A lot of people sent stuff in December, which is um, to be expected. Uh, we still we have a few things in January. First thing I want to do is we have a featured leather, but um, there were there were two other leathers, and I'm just going to hit on them really quick before we move into the featured leather. Um, I wanted to say thank you for this postcard, and there's actually not a, like a name for the return address on here, so I don't know who sent this, but it's very pretty, and I appreciate it. Uh, and then also we had uh, another letter um, from Becca, and uh, Becca, Becca's letter was short and sweet. She pretty much just wanted to send us some recipes. So she actually sent us two recipes, one for uh, kimbap rice balls and kimbap gimbap which I believe are Korean dishes, and I appreciate that, thank you very much. Uh, for anyone who's interested, you can send us recipes. Uh, if you choose to do so, please include a permission form, which you can find, I think it's in the mail thing. There's a link in the description box. For a mail fact. For mail FAQ, and I think one of the things there will actually take you to a place where you can print the permission form. Please send that with, uh, with any recipes you send, because we are still planning to do a cookbook. We haven't canceled it, I promise, so. We appreciate that. Uh, now, oh yeah, also uh, Becca included this, which is cool. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and it's got like a little Triforce and Pokeball on it. Very, very neat. All right, uh, so let's get on to our featured leather, and the featured leather this month is from... Jordan in Platteville, Wisconsin. Platteville, Wisconsin. Stephen Amal, hello. My name is Jordan, and I live in a small community of less than 2,000 people located in southwestern Wisconsin. I'm 18 years old and currently attending the University of Wisconsin Platteville. College has been a great opportunity to meet people with common interests, and I'm thankful for that, but I'm especially grateful for you two being relatable friends before my college days. My high school consisted of less than 100 students, and the popularity of video games was very small. Thank you, Stephen Amal, for unknowing, unknow, unknowingly, it's a very hard word, uh, providing me a sense of companionship. Uh, and then in the next section, Jordan asked for a bit of life advice, so I'm just going to kind of condense his story. Basically... Um, there is a girl who is in a diff in a different university, like three hours away, and he's kind of interested, but he's at the same time like a little concerned about the fact that there's distance. He's focusing on studies first, which is good. You should focus on your studies, but at the same time, he's like, man, you know, how do I make this work? Because that would be really cool. And his question is. Stephen Amau, after college, how did you two end up together? I know you each, uh, I, I know that you knew each other through Starman, which is also the world's most popular matchmaking site, um, throughout college, but what justified you moving to South Carolina, Mao? And Stephen, how often did you visit Mao in Wisconsin and vice versa? So, how did we end up together? The quick version. We e dated. We have other mail. Well, we sort of like knew each other, but then we e dated in March. I mean, Basically what happened is we, we, we knew each other through Starmen, true, um, but we had developed feelings for each other because we had communicated quite a bit um, and you know we, we basically found out that we liked each other and then we admitted it to each other and then for all intents and purposes we started you know dating. We had never actually met but you know we were dating um, and then that went on for years and years and years, and during that pr that time, um, I would visit you and you would visit me, and we pretty much always saw each other every three months. Pretty much. Pretty much. There was a few times where it was like five, and oh man, five's pushing it. Five is a long time. Um, but uh, three months is was probably the norm for us. It was like basically every three months, three to four months, either I was visiting her or she was visiting me, and it went it went on for like on like that for several years. Well, for a year it was like that, but then I started staying the summers down That's here. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, the first summer you didn't, but then the the second summer that we had been dating, Mal just uh, stayed with my family for the entire summer, and then the next summer she did the same thing. So that uh, that made it a lot easier. Yeah, being able to to spend that time together. 
Um, so your justification for moving to South Carolina was basically... Well, by the time school was over and we both graduated, I mean, we were engaged. Yeah. So we had to figure out where we were going to live. Yeah. So it was going to be somewhere. It was going to be somewhere and of the of the two places that we knew very well, which was Wisconsin, Wisconsin. and South Carolina, um, we both preferred South Carolina. Wisconsin's got some harsh winters. Yeah, too harsh. And South Carolina does not. We also know Savannah, I guess, but I didn't want to live in Savannah. I had had enough of Savannah. <laughs> it's a great place to visit. Wouldn't want to live there again. Um, anyway, I hope that helps in some way. Um, obviously, you have to get to the point where you're actually, you know, dating. Um, but you'll just have to put yourself out there and be like, hey, you know, we talk a lot. Would you like to, I don't know, do something sometime? I mean, I know that they visit each other occasionally. Yeah. So, you, I don't know. You'll have to put yourself out there and, and see where it goes. Just um, good luck. That's, that's what I'll say. It worked out for me. I hope it also works out for you. Uh, now, at the end of the letter, it says, Now put down this letter and continue with the huge amount of mail in front of you. Thank you so much, Jordan. Jordan, thank you for the letter. Uh, now, we actually don't have a huge amount of mail this month. We only have, I think, three packages. Um, we've got uh, two packages from one person, and then we have another package and another package. So first up, the first person to send packages is from... Matthew in Ontario. Matthew in Ontario. So let's... Okay, so the first one, I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say I know what this is. And when we pull it up, you'll see why I say that. So this is the first thing. And as you can see, it's a Guitar Hero box. And then also, whenever um, things go through customs, you have to, like, declare what it is. What it is. And it says two video game guitars. So I'm going to assume that this is uh, Guitar Hero 3... Legends of Rock for the PlayStation 3. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if we just slice this open. I do not have this game. I was a big fan of... Um, I didn't really play a lot of the the first Guitar Hero, but when, the, when Guitar Hero 2 came out for um, Xbox 360, uh, I played a lot of that. And I was also big into Rock Band. I thought Rock Band was a ton of fun. We had it at college and we played a lot of it in college. Actually, one of, the, one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had at college happened because of Rock Band. Did I ever tell you that? Uh, no. Um, Maybe. I was... We had Rock Band, and there was one night where we had left the door unlocked to our dorm. Um, this was back in freshman year, so this was before the vlog. This is when you were rooming with Alex and Ian. It was when I was with Alex and Ian, and it was a very small dorm. Right? So this, the dorm, like, we had the, um, we had the, the door, uh, un, unlocked and, like, kind of open, but it wasn't open. The door wasn't open. It was just, like, ajar. That, that, that's what I should say. The door was ajar. We were playing rock band. All of a sudden, people walked in and were like, dude, rock band, all right. And everyone just, like, all of our group just looked at each other like, what's going on? And then they, like, Sat one of the guys like sat down and was like cool because it was like they walked in right as one of the songs was in and you're like cool cool you mind if I give it a shot cool and everyone's just looking at each other like who are these people but I think everyone assumed that s someone knew these people so they they sat down and they played like two songs it was like I think two guys and two girls maybe. And they they had like the microphone and the guitars and stuff and they were just they were like, Oh, that was a lot of fun, thanks. And then they walked out. And when they walked out, everyone in the dorm was like, Who were those people? And that's there's there's a mentality for that for college. Um, and that's exactly what this is. It's just it's just the two um, two guitars. Uh, there's a mentality for that for college where like you like a, a lot of people in college will leave their doors open. That's and, what we did. And people will like stop by and it's a way to make friends, but we didn't have our door open. That's not what we did, you know? That was completely different. And yeah, it is exactly what what it said in the box. There's just, uh, there's Guitar Hero guitars in here. All right, very cool, Matthew. And we also have another package from Matthew, which will open as soon as I get this back in the box. And the next package um, actually has a leather and some other stuff here. Let's see what the leather says. To Stephen and Mallory, 
It's good to write to the two of you again, and I hope that the two of you enjoyed your Christmas. I'm sure you have noticed the obvious item I've given you, and I was surprised that you didn't have a Guitar Hero game in your catalog, especially since you play guitar in your life, but that is not the only reason why I'm writing this letter to you. Uh, having now taken the journey in its entirety, I know that if games are not being talked about, then it's food. And since my favorite vlog video uh, was day 740 poutine time, which made me proud being Canadian, I knew that I wanted to add to your list of dishes from Canada, especially uh, when Steven suggested that Canadians have only given poutine routine to the culinary world. Uh, I don't know if I said that that was the only thing, but certainly notable. <laughs> the thing you know. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's because that's what I know. Also, poutine's really good. Uh, with that in mind, I'm giving you two cookbooks. One is from my home church, which was made in 2014 for a celebratory event within the church. The congregation all had a chance to submit recipes, and I contributed one of my own. It's on page 57. And for those who are watching this video, no, it's not a dessert. It is a Canadian take on my favorite pasta dish, uh, carbonara, using Canadian pea meal bacon instead of regular bacon, as well as popular local protein from where I live called summer sausage. I don't know if these ingredients are available to you, but if they are, I would encourage you to give it a try. I don't know about uh, pea meal bacon, but summer, sa sa summer sausage definitely is. Um, also, I know from experience uh, some of the best recipes you'll ever get from a uh, church cookbook. If you ever have a chance to go to like, sometimes churches will have like yard sales or something like that, and sometimes they'll have like their own cookbook that they'll be selling. Get those suckers, because you wanna know people know how to cook, well, I, I'm saying I'm doing it based on experience around here because we have a lot of southern, southern cooks, you know. Those southern ladies at church. Exactly. Like, seriously good stuff. But seriously, you should pick up church cookbooks because it's got some amazing food in it. The second cookbook uh, is the most recent edition of a popular cookbook that specializes in the cooking made by the Mennonites, which are the Canadian equivalent of the Amish, called Food That Really Schmecks by Edna Stabler. That is an amazing title. I love that. Uh, it is a famous cookbook where I live, and most people either have a copy or have at least heard of it, and my own family ha uh, also owns a copy. The first edition of this cookbook was published nearly 50 years ago, and I know that its recipes will make both of you, your families, and your friends happy. In addition to this, knowing that you have two cats, I've given you some pictures of two of my characters from Final Fantasy XIV named Mathia and Rika, who are part of the cat-human race known as the Makote. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sure you've never received anything like this, but I'm sure you will enjoy having Mathia and Rika as part of your kitty family, along with Sagan and Kepler. They're my best fighters, but also have a certain level of adorability that I am certain you will enjoy. Also, I'm sure you're wondering about the facial tattoos on both characters. They are standard features for the Makote, and it may put some people off, but I've come to appreciate them, and I hope you will too. So there's actually um, pictures of the Final Fantasy characters, and they are cats. What was it in the Nintendo Direct we just saw? There was, what game was it? I don't remember. Oh, it was uh, Bravely Default, the second one. Is it Bravely Second? Yeah. Something like that? And there's Catmancers now? I want to play a game with a Catmancer. Before I conclude the letter, I wanted to ask for some help with something I'm currently doing. I'm giving you a promo poster for the major Let's Play project I'm doing this year called Hashtag Elite Six. To bring attention to it, I'm sure that the games that will be featured will be enjoyed by anyone who is interested in taking a look. Any support from your viewers would be greatly appreciated, and I really want this project to be my breakout series. Thank you for your support in this endeavor, and I hope that your endorsement will go a long way in helping to make this series a success. Uh, in the meantime, keep doing what the two of you do best, and I will make sure to send you another game to add to your game collection in the future, likely to serve as a gift for the two of you when you celebrate your fifth anniversary in August. Respectfully yours, Matthew, also known as Novara Autism. And P.S. 1962 is a long time ago. But you know what else was a long time ago? 1962 B.C. Which, little known fact, is when the earliest Taco Bells got started. You know what they served? Do I want to know? They served... <laughs> That's my best, like, caveman. Actually, it's actually not that. Yeah, it's not old that long ago. I just that. realized. See, I see BC, and I'm like, Ugh, uh, but yeah, that's um, that's only 2000. Yeah, that's actually not that old. <laughs> anyway, Matthew, thank you so much for the leather, the guitar here, guitars, and of course for the cookbooks, because I'm looking for food that really schmacks. Oh, you're talking about that one. Yeah. Well, you see, see what I did there. I and I took that title and turned it into. A sentence. Good. Anyway, uh, the next thing, the next thing that we'll be opening is from Stephanie in Newton Falls, Ohio. And Stephanie uh, is responsible for sending us uh, oh so many 
uh, board, board games. games recently, but there is a, another package here. So inside there is a leather that says Steven on it, and it has a cute little bunny sticker on the back. I like the bunny sticker. I feel bad because I think that I'm gonna, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I was gonna say, I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna rip the bunny's ears off when I open this, and I did. He can't hear pretty hard. the things I'm saying now. Um, yeah, that is very pretty. I wonder what that is. I'm gonna show that. On the back, it says Castle of Shallan in Lake Geneva. Cool. I like that. That is beautiful. Looks like the setting for like a video game. Uh, let's see. Dear Stephen, on day 1655, you mentioned you were interested in genealogy. Uh, enclosed is something that may give you a little more information. I've used it, and the results are informative and interesting. It won't give you names or faces, but it is a start. From Stephanie, a.k.a. Faustina Aurelia. What? That's awesome. That's really, really cool. So, how does this work, exactly? Ancestry DNA. I need to open this. I am. Do you want the scissors or something? <laughs> Just give me this pen. Uh, I am interested in uh, family history stuff. Um, some of my relatives have done some of it, but then also not. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now your family's got oh, it figured family's out. Been, well, my dad's family. Yeah, they've they've been doing that kind of stuff, which is good for you. But on our side, it's it's scattered. I've had I've managed to get some information from some relatives, but not not a ton. This is neat. What? How do I open it? Ancestry DNA. Uh, simply complete the following steps and let the discoveries begin. Uh, so it's a little kit, and you you basically, it's a kit that you do online for, um, it's Ancestry.com, that's the name of the site, right? Yeah. Interesting. So there's a little tube. So it's a place to do a collection bag. Wait, what? Wait, when they say DNA. They mean actual they DNA. They mean DNA. Holy crap. You spit into a tube and you mail it to them. What? What? That's amazing. There's a little, that's what this bag is for. That's incredible. There's a little bag and you spit into a tube and the tube is in here. That's incredible. You spit into this little tube and then you mail it to them. Wow. I didn't even know that this exists. So that's, I've heard about it. Really? Mm -hmm. That's cool. They'll tell you like. I thought Ancestry.com was just a site where you're like, you type in your name and you know, you're like, come on, give me some information. But apparently. I've done that for my name. Yeah, but now there's like collection bags where they're like, give us your spit, we'll figure something out. That's amazing. That is so cool. Stephanie, thank you. Um, that'll probably be the subject of a vlog. <laughs> it's like, well. Fingers crossed, everyone. That's that's awesome because that's actually like, it, it sounds ridiculous, but that's actually how DNA works. So, mm -hmm. that is cool. That is super cool. Anyway, um, thanks again. That is that is a very interesting and thoughtful gift, and I hope that I can learn some stuff because of that. So, thanks. And our final package today is coming from Michael in Staten Island, New York. And it's a pretty big box. It's also very heavy. It's very very heavy. It's not as big as like the Guitar Hero boxes, but like in the Guitar Hero boxes, you know that it's you know, Guitar Hero. This says, read first. Okay, dear Stephen Amell, hello, how are you guys doing? My name is Michael and I really enjoy your videos, even if the vlogs are behind. Whenever they come out, it makes watching them special. In the box is a number of PS2 games that I had as a child. A lot of the games are oriented to children. One that I can say I would that would make a pretty cool first 20 is Enter the Matrix. Hope you can find something to do with these games. Thanks for the videos, Michael, uh, also known in, on YouTube as Mike C. Actually, he messaged me or wrote a comment on a YouTube video that I remember and he changed his YouTube name to uh, Mike Capella, so Mike Capella. Um, First off, I don't know how many games are in that box, but there's a list of them here, and this is a ton of games. Holy cow. And I've played Enter the Matrix. I actually rented a Enter, the Ma uh, Enter the Matrix back in the day, and I remember really liking it. Um, I think it didn't do well in terms of review scores, and maybe if I went back and played it now, I'd be like, oh, this is bad. But I, whenever I rented it, I liked it a lot. Um, it's very... It's a pretty cover. It's got, um, from what I remember, there's a button dedicated to bullet time. So like you can hit a button and everything's like 
I should do a first one. I think it'd be fun. It's an older game now, but it, it was, I remember enjoying it, so. I probably will. So Enter the Matrix is in here. Uh, MLB 2004. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Uh, Ratchet Deadlocked. Uh, Pinball Hall of Fame. The Goat, the Goatlib Collection. Gottlieb. 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 Finding Nemo. Isn't there a sequel to that movie coming out soon? Yeah. Uh, Nicktoons Movin', which is an eye toy. Oh my god, eye toy. I haven't seen that in forever. Uh, this is Nicktoons Attack of the Toy Bots. There's also uh, MLB Power Pros and Backyard Football. Oh man, Backyard Football. That used to be a PC series. It probably still is a PC series, but they were releasing on consoles too, I guess. Uh, Nicktoons Unite, which I've actually heard things about that I, I don't know if I heard it was good or bad, but it's like a cooperative fighting game or something, and you play as various Nicktoons. It's very, very cool. Anyway, that. Um, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. DDR Max 2. God, this is a good game. It's a good game. I was a big uh, DDR person in high school, and I loved uh, DDR Max 2. SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants. Well, that's not the right word that goes there. Uh, Scooby-Doo, Night of a Thousand... A Hundred Frights. Oh, I, I gave it ten times more frights than there actually were. Sorry, Scooby-Doo. made it scarier. It's not that scary. Uh, Jimmy Neutron, Attack of the... Twonkies? Maybe it's Twinkies. No, it's Twonkies. <laughs> it's Twonkies. That's a... <laughs> I don't know what the Twonky is. I love that show. Uh, the Fairly Odd Parents, Shadow Showdown. Give me your give me your best impression of, Cosmo? of Wanda. Wanda. Oh, Cosmo! Okay, now give me your best Cosmo. Ah, Wanda! I don't know. He's always like getting into trouble and doing stupid stuff. Yeah, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I, I also really enjoyed that show. Wheel of Fortune, which has to exist for every console ever. Uh, Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. Very cool. They must wait for new consoles to come out to make new Wheel of Fortunes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nicktoons Battle for Volcano Island. There's like, I think this is like every Nicktoons game, actually. Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem. Uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Game. Uh, Pac-Man World Rally. Spider-Man Friend or Foe. The Incredibles, the game. Uh, another Backyard Baseball, just the, I guess the original Backyard Baseball. Uh, Spongebob Squarepants Creature from the Krusty Krab. Oh, they're gonna fall. Madagascar the game. Sorry. Uh, 2K Sports Major League Baseball 2K7. Uh, Brunswick Pro Bowling. Is that MLB 2006? The Fairly Odd Parents Break in the Rules, in which Timmy is on the front literally breaking the rules. And then also, this is Pac-Man World 2, Pac-Man World 2. It's a lot of games. Yeah. Let's attempt to show them. Okay. That is a lot of games. Holy cow. That is a lot of games. And I think maybe in One Fell Swoop you took care of like every Nickelodeon game and Fairly Odd Parents game and SpongeBob game. Like I don't know how many were made for PS2 and PS2's got a gigantic library. I don't know how many games. I think it's like 3,000. Something yeah, like that. I know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge library. But this helps a lot. <laughs> it takes care of a lot of them. Uh, Mike, thank you so, so much. This is awesome. Um, this is very, very cool. And like I said, I think you did take care of all of the uh, all the Nickelodeon games. I think I would like to do a first 20 on Enter the Matrix. I don't remember it all that well. I just remember when I rented it, I liked it. So we'll have to see if that has, has changed at all because I thought it was good, so. And Bullet Time is fun, man. Bullet Time is just a fun game. What's the other game? Max Payne. I've never played Max Payne. I don't, I haven't. <laughs> that was a good, good way of adding to that conversation. I also haven't. I have it on PC, but I, I should play that sometime. I recently played it. Well, maybe the original Max Payne hasn't aged well. If you guys are watching this, Tell me which Max Payne to play. Is the first one okay to play, or do I need to play a different one? Because I'm interested. I've never played any of them. Um, anyway, Mike, thank you. There's so many games here, and I sincerely appreciate it. And uh, these will all be warmly welcomed into our collection. Uh, and for everyone that sent in stuff, 
Thank you. We sincerely appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching right now and you'd like to send something in, you can. There is a link down in the description box below, and it will show you um, all of the... There's an FAQ, basically. It shows you where to send stuff and also what to send, what not to send, things like that. And um, that's it. We'll see you guys next month for another mail. And I'm, I'm excited because we're actually, as of right now, we're caught up on mail. Yeah. Wow. As of right now, the second we're caught up on mail. Mm-hmm. We did it. We are. But by the time it comes out, we may not be. We won't. <laughs> Darn. <laughs>